Hi, my name is Steven. I'm going to be doing a web series about hypnosis, taking you from where you are now to being able to hypnotize your friends. My experience with hypnosis is I taught myself hypnosis through watching online lectures, talking to people, and then doing it myself. I've hypnotized five people over the summer, and I've done it multiple times to each of them. The web series is going to be divided into five parts, an introduction, an overview of inductions, which is hypnotizing someone, what to do to get them under. The next is going to be the content of an induction. The fourth part is going to be what to do once they're under to keep them under and have a lot of fun. And the fifth part is going to be other types of hypnosis you can also do instead of, or besides formal hypnosis, which is this. So the introduction to hypnosis is, I'm going to be talking about pre-hypnosis techniques and things you can do before you start to hypnotize people to make them want to be hypnotized. The first of which is talking positively about hypnosis and saying how fun it is and how you'd love to do it and it would be a great experience for them. Tell them how relaxing it is. Tell people that it's a lot of fun. It's like having a dream with your eyes open. Um, swear that you won't do anything creepy and tell them that if you do, that they will wake up from it. There is no way in hypnosis you can make someone spill all their like inner secrets and jump off a building or anything like that. You wouldn't do anything in hypnosis, in hypnosis you wouldn't do in a dream. You are kind of like the person imagining the dream for them and they're experiencing it and they wouldn't do anything they wouldn't do in a dream. Emphasize that. It's very important that it'll make them feel a lot more comfortable with what they're doing. That's mostly what you have to do before you hypnotize someone. Now an overview of inductions involves what you're going to say, where you're going to say it, and what to do directly before you start the induction hypnosis itself. What you're going to say is called often an induction script and you can find them online. I'm going to attach one that I've been using for a while that I got from Brandon from the Freddy W team on his second channel and I'll link to his, one of his videos or maybe all three of them where he does hypnosis and explains it a little bit. Um, hypnosis scripts, you can get them anywhere. They're interchangeable, you can change parts of them out. Um, but it doesn't really matter as much what you say, it matters how you say it. That you're confident when you're speaking, that you're almost a different person, which is way more authoritative, authoritative, way more confident, and kind of bossing them around a little bit. Because once they're under hypnosis, you want them to listen to everything you say. And so you're going to have to be a little bit bossy. Um, where you are is generally you want to put someone in a place for hypnosis that you'd want to sleep in. And with the exception being that you can use chairs, comfortable chairs. So you want to find a place where the person who's going to be hypnotized is relaxed and it's very quiet, and there aren't distractions. For example, you have to turn your phone off because I was in the middle of hypnotizing someone, and the phone starts buzzing, and it's in their pocket, and so that just ruined the entire thing. Uh, make sure your phone is off, make sure their phone is off, make sure there isn't going to be any loud noises, people busting in, walking through, place you'd want to sleep, and if they're sitting in a chair, which is perfectly acceptable, it's good. Make sure they don't fall over, because hypnosis in itself isn't dangerous, isn't going to scar their mind, but falling out of a chair might scar their mind and leave a scar, hurt them. So if they are in a chair, make sure they're not going to fall over and hurt themselves, or that you can catch them. Directly before you, directly before you start to hypnotize someone, you want to be very authoritative, tell them where to sit, Use false choices, which would be like saying, um, I don't know if you're going to go into hypnosis very quickly, or if it's going to take you a little bit longer. Either way, you're going to feel very relaxed at the end of it. Try not to use language like, we're going to try hypnosis, try to say, I'm going to hypnotize you. That little confidence that you have is going to transfer into them, and they're going to feel like they're really going to go under and if they feel like they're going to go under, and if they want to go under, it'll make your life a lot easier. 
um, answer all of their questions. Make sure that they don't, they're not a little bit freaked out about it still. Make sure they're confident about what they're doing. That they're not going to be like scared and being scared or not wanting to be hypnotized. There's nothing you can do about that. If they're scared or don't want to be hypnotized, it's not going to work. So make sure they're not scared, answer their questions, and make sure they want to be hypnotized and make it sound awesome. Make them really want to do it. Um, just to start, make sure they're very comfortable. Tell them to be very comfortable. Tell them to focus on their breathing. Breathing. Slow, deep breaths. And you may even start with like a light hypnosis, which is like going halfway through hypnosis to, so that they know what they're doing, which might calm them down to make them more confident about what they're about to do. For the content of the induction, you, again, you want to be very confident about your material that you're speaking. That you're going to be telling them no ums and buts. Pauses are all right, though. So you may want to memorize your script, or you may just want to read through it a bunch of times out loud to yourself, and make sure you know what you're going to say, and that you're not nervous while you're doing it. You don't want to have your voice stutter. You want to be very confident, almost like you're delivering a speech just to one person, hopefully to their subconscious by the end of it. Um, talk slowly. Give them time to think about what you're saying. The slower you talk, the more time they have to relax and to fill in the gaps. During your induction, you may need to, or your induction may take a very long time, it may take 20 minutes, and for your first time, you may want to do that because the longer you spend on it, the more relaxed hopefully they'll be with each passing minute and the better your odds are of having them fully under hypnosis. Um, if you're doing it in a dark room, which you should be, and if you haven't memorized it, which is okay, you'll want to have like a reading light or some sort of other light. Using your phone isn't ideal because it's going to take a while and keeping your screen on might be a problem and stopping mid-sentence isn't very... doesn't help. So have a reading light handy so you can read off of your page or something like that. Um, and be confident so that if you do, if your pages mess up, if you can't read a word, or if you think that something isn't very good, make sure that you're confident enough to be able to skip over it. Now I'm going to go through some of the stages of an induction script that I use, or an induction process that I use and you should be able to do most of this yourself. So the first thing that I do is once they're comfortable, once they've been breathing for about 30 seconds, taking deep breaths, is I tell them that with each breath you take, you feel more relaxed and you feel like some good feeling seeping throughout your body, reaching every part of your body, calming you down. Letting them just sit there for 30 seconds, they'll relax themselves. It's very easy, and it's a good start. Next, I like to tell them to choose a point on the wall somewhere, or choose, or you can use the pendulum, which is you take something, I don't have anything handy right now, but you take something and you swing it back and forth and have them focus on it, or just a point on the wall, which works just as well. And then I like to tell them that everything else is fading, the rest of the world doesn't seem to matter anymore and that generally calms them down and makes them just relax and then I say okay when I turn the lights off you're gonna remember your point and keep it in your head or the pendulum you're gonna have already memorized it and when I turn the lights off your eyes are gonna close and you're gonna still see the point or the pendulum so then you turn the lights off and that should then you start your actual script. I have a script up over here. Um, the main pieces of the script is once their eyes are closed, you just start telling them things that will relax them, that help them breathe slowly, 
and you can get an induction script off the internet, it will often help. I'm going to include one. And I'm also going to include a video of me reading the whole thing, which I might include the excerpts of, or just make that a whole part. And so, the general pieces of it are the start, closing their eyes, deepeners, which are just making them feel more and more relaxed, and at the very end, you should say things like, count down from 10 to 0, and have them like, snap. Um, my routine is, I'm going to count down from 10 to 0, and when I do, you will be in a state of awareness. You'll see things I tell you to see, hear things I tell you to hear, and your mind will fill in the gaps. You'll never be so afraid that you'll want to get away from it. You'll be confident enough to progress through, but there will be some danger on the way. And it's up to you to figure out what to do about it. And then I count down from 10 to 0, snap. And then here comes the fun part. You have to figure out if they're hypnotized or not, which seems pretty easy, but it gets more complicated if you have multiple people. One time I had two people in the room, and the one I was pretty sure was hypnotized, and the other one definitely wasn't. And I was, that was the first time I was hypnotizing anyone. And I was a little bit freaked out, and I just followed what I, my notes had been to figure out if someone's hypnotized or not. And the one who wasn't hypnotized answered my question first, woke the other one up, and the opportunity was lost. So I'd recommend having the person, having the people, if there are multiple, stand up walk around the room a little bit. Don't do anything too embarrassing. Um, I'd probably just have them walk around the room and like gauge how they walk, if they're hypnotized or not. Tell them do something silly that they would normally not believe, like this pen is now a wand and I'm going to cast a fire spell and fire is going to shoot out of this and don't let the wand point at you as I'm casting the spell, you might get burnt. Then I'll start to speak some Harry Potter gibberish or something. Cast o spell low, and then they'll like walk away if they're hypnotized and like not want to get hit by the fire or something like that. Just start messing with them a little bit, and then if they're not hypnotized, just ask them how what happened. Ask them like go through your routine. Like did this work? How did this work? I had one guy who part of my routine was. I'd say, I kept bringing it up, picture a sailboat, and as you breathe in, the sailboat rocks one way, as you breathe out, it rocks the other way. And he kept saying that, like, this image of a sailboat rocking back and forth, the sailboat would go faster than his breathing, and it really just didn't mesh well with him. So I then made a, um, in my hypnosis notebook, which I have, I made a note for Adam, his name was. Adam, no sailboat. And then adding deepeners also. Because he wasn't fully hypnotized or didn't feel very ready when I started counting down. So, first time you might fail, just tell them it's okay. Ask them what happened, what worked, what didn't. Recalibrate mentally, make some notes. Do it again. Often, what'll help is swapping some pieces of it out so it's not completely the same. Um, swapping some of your deepeners out. Maybe you want to get them under in a different way. Get them, I mean, get them, get their eyes closed in a different way. But most of the time, just taking more time, being slower, making them relax more, will really help them. Um, and less distractions. If they're distracted into being woken up, that's, that's the main thing that'll make you fail. Um, That's most of the um, induction. You'll figure most of it out after your second or third time trying to hypnotize someone. It's like the hardest part. It's also the most fun part to do, in my opinion, next to messing with them. So be confident in your routine. Um, adapt if it doesn't work. And try to memorize it or know the majority of it so you can fix things on the fly. Once someone's under and you know that they're under, you want to keep them under. And the main ways you can do this is by not being too ridiculous. Um, 
Don't start out by telling them that the purple dragon is going to eat them if they don't sing. Start out with telling them to walk around, telling them to picture things. I, for one time, I told a guy, okay, now you're in Mexico. Now, this bed, and I just put a blanket out, is a very hard Mexican bed, but it's going to be really, feel really good on your back, even though it's not as good as a regular bed. And laid down on it, they're like, wow, Mexico, like drugs? And I said, yes, Mexico, like drugs. And um, so anyway, they laid down, it worked well. Um, watch out for light. Often when you're hypnotized, your eyes will dilate, which means your pupils get really big. Not that big, but large. And um, any lights shine in their eyes will pull them out of it, give them a big headache. And that's not going to be fun because they're not going to enjoy it and they're going to be upset and angry. Um, try to do like scenarios like you're a cop there, a prisoner, and plant seeds like give them a bunch of like scrap pieces of paper and tell them this is a million dollars. Now you're going to have to use this later. Hold on to it. Do some other stuff and then come back to it. And um, have them problem solve also. Like you need to get past this flame barrier. Your money can put out the fire, but then you'll lose it. Try to make a pathway with your money. Um, never, ever laugh. Ever. The fastest way to pull someone out of hypnosis is to start laughing at them. Now, if you have like an audience or a crowd or other people watching or nearby, they can laugh a little bit. If you laugh at them, they will get pulled right out of it and go, what am I doing? Like, one time I had a person hypnotized fully, and I just started like cracking out, like, is he really doing this? And um, then he's like, wait, what did I just do? Why was I doing that? And I was like, oh, great, now he's out of hypnosis. So, big point, never laugh at, any, at someone under hypnosis. That's the main points of hypnosis. I mean, you've learned the introduction. Um, how to start hypnosis, how to talk to people about hypnosis. You've learned, I've talked about where to get induction scripts to be very confident with them. Be in a dark, quiet room with no distractions. Um, setting up false choices, answer their questions beforehand. Uh, talk slowly. When, if you have any troubles, or if you're scared of something, or if you're not sure about something, just stop mid-script, tell them to focus on their breathing, become collected again, continue reading. Um, if it doesn't work, ask them why. You learn how to tell if someone's under, just have them walk around and kind of gauge if they're awake or not. And watch out for light, and never, ever laugh that will pull them out of hypnosis. They'll think they're ridiculous for doing it in the first place. And that will not be fun. That's the majority of hypnosis. Practice it. Try it with friends. Have fun. Now I'm going to uh, go through a hypnosis routine. And you can like try to copy this maybe. Note how I like speak, the pacing of it all. Get very comfortable. Take a deep breath in, and then exhale. With every breath in, feel yourself becoming ten times more relaxed. Feel the air that you're breathing in reaching all over your body, calming you down, taking the stress out of your life. As we go along, 
keep remembering to take deep breaths and feel every breath relaxing you more and more. Throughout the day, you've accumulated stress. There's been a lot of aches in your body, in your joints, in your bones, in your posture from walking around. I want you to picture all of this stress, all of this nervous, pent up angst as orange electric energy. As a negative energy, it stings a little. You can feel it dancing around all the stressful parts of your body. Your wrists, your ankles, your lower back, your neck. I want you to gather it up slowly. Feel it leaving your fingertips as it travels up your fingers, over the bones of your palms, the backs of your hands, shoots up your forearms, and in your chest you feel it start to gather. Eventually, it migrates up your neck, your jawbone, and this orange electric energy finally pools right at the top of your head. And as this energy has left every other part of your body to gather there, it leaves all those ligaments and joints smooth and calm and numb. The rest of your body is at peace. Just the top of your head crackles with this negative energy. Now slowly, the color of this energy turns from orange to blue. And it begins to travel down over your forehead, over the bridge of your nose, your cheekbones, slowly, slowly down your neck, over your collarbones, over your rib cage, and this blue energy as it passes by your body starts to migrate lower, lower, and lower down. It leaves everything feeling extremely calm, in a deeper state of purity and quiet than you have ever known. It gathers at your hips, starts moving down over your thighs, your kneecaps, down through your calf muscles, cleansing them completely. Finally, at the top of your feet, it moves up over the arch of your foot, the balls of your feet, and finally your toes. Everything is wiped clean. Now a cool, soothing liquid metal starts to formulate and drips at the tips of your toes and starts to drop down gathering at your heels filling them up and as it does it weighs your feet down to the sand of the beach you can't move your feet anymore they're immobile the liquid metal starts to move up your calves, pooling around them, filling them up. You can't move any part of your body that this liquid metal fills up, but it's a good feeling. It leaves you cool and calm and collected in a state of peace. The liquid metal moves up your legs up your hips, 
over your spine. And now it starts to grow at your fingertips, at your hands, your wrists, your forearms, into your biceps, and this cool liquid metal finally converges your shoulders, weighing you down flat. Now all that is left is your head. Slowly but surely, the liquid metal starts to migrate up your neck, over your jaw, over your cheeks, over your eyes, rendering them completely sightless. It finally finishes the job at the top of your head. Every part of you is weighed down and immobile in the sand of the beach. Still, with every breath you take in, you feel yourself becoming more and more relaxed. You feel your body becoming more at peace with itself. And these deep breaths rejuvenate you. I'm going to count down from 10 to 0. And when I do, you will be in a state of awareness. But you will see things I tell you to see. You will hear things I tell you to hear. And your mind will fill in the gaps. You will never be so afraid that you will want to get away from it. You will be confident enough to progress through but there will be some danger along the way. And it's up to you to figure out what to do about it. 10, nine, eight, seven, six, Five, four, three, two, one, zero. What's your name? Stand up. And that was kind of a short hypnosis induction. If you're unsure about what you're doing, you should slow down. I should have probably gone a little bit slower. You should make it longer, add other deepeners that you've found on the internet or elsewhere you've created yourself to relax people more. And Other things you can ask them is what's their favorite animal and then make them make that sound. That'll also be a good indication of if they're under hypnosis. But if you laugh at that, which I laugh at that a lot, um, it'll probably bring them out of hypnosis.